My name is David. Thanks for stopping by Prepare911.com. Today we're going to be going over part two of our mini bug out bag series. Today we're going to be talking about comms, signaling, and fire. I think you're going to love this episode, so let's get started. During turbulent times, you step into the fray to protect yourself and those you love. Go to prepare911.com for more information. And depending on whether you're in an urban or rural environment is going to determine what options you have for communications. So I tried to put in a variety of things inside the bottle. First is the good old-fashioned calling card. If you find yourself in an airport, you don't have your phone, your phone has died, and you need to make a long-distance phone call, a calling card can save your bacon. You can purchase these. It's a prepaid card. Many of them have international plans on them. It just determines what country you're calling from as far as what the ta or what the um, the rate is that they're going to charge you. But if you have you know 500 minutes or something like that, even if you're traveling overseas with a pretty high rate, you should be able to make one or two good calls home in order to tell somebody what's going on and get assistance. So I would always include a calling card. The other thing to remember is that you don't necessarily have to have the card itself. Many of these have numbers and pins. Inside of the kit is a spot where you can write the calling card information down inside of the plan so that even if you don't have the card, you lose the card, you've still got all the information you need in order to make the call. It's not like it's a uh, uh, a credit card that you need to swipe so just so you have the information you should be good to go. The next thing on the plan is the actual communications plan. In fact one whole page is designated just to a communications plan meaning it talks about primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency communication plans. And it lists out different phone numbers, different means and methods of communications. All that is meant by the page in the booklet is to provide a primer on some ways that you can go about communicating, but it has to be customized for you and your situation. Maybe you don't have a cell phone. Maybe everyone has cell phones. It's, try, it's made to be as customizable for your situation and, and you just write all the information down inside of there with a pen or pencil so that you have that in the event that you need it. Next is going to be a small USB thumb drive. And you might think, what in the world does a small USB thumb drive have to do with survival and preparedness? So here's the way that I've incorporated this item into my kit. You can take and scan copies and make pictures of all of your identifying items. So passport, driver's license, immigration cards, anything that's important, birth certificates. Even if you are in a situation to where those documents might not serve as the proof or the picture might not serve as the proof, you will have those reference numbers off that document stored inside the pictures inside this card. Now I would always keep that information encrypted so that other people couldn't read it and just in case you lost it because this is pretty small. This is stored inside a plastic bag inside the bottle but they do have USB thumb drives that are encrypted uh, that are fully encrypted and they also have uh, thumb drives that are waterproof. I put to, in my situation, I use an encryption program, which I'm going to talk about in a separate video, in order to create an encrypted container. Then the program itself is on here, but you have to have a de decryption key that's over 20 characters long in order to open up the con encrypted container. The other thing that it's really good for is I will go through my home once every couple of years and just take a picture or a few pictures of each wall all the way around my home and I'll start in the bedrooms upstairs and go all the way into the basement. The reason I do that is one of my sisters had a house fire. So State Farm asked that she provide them 
essentially an Excel spreadsheet of everything inside her home. It's going to be hard to remember, especially under a lot of stress, all the different items that are included in your house. But if you have a picture, which only takes about 10 minutes when I do this, of all the different walls and rooms inside my home, you're just going to be able to look at the picture and go, okay, we had a couch, we had chairs, this is where we bought them. You know, we, you'll remember if you have uh, big ticket electronic items, you can take a picture of the serial number and of the model of those items so that you can help provide that additional information. Computers, all of those sorts of things, if you just walk through with a camera really quick, take all those pictures, then you've got it. So if your house, let's say you're in California and there's a wildfire coming through, you know that inside this bottle, you have all the information that you need in order to get with FEMA, file a claim, in order to get with your insurance company and file a claim. The other thing that is so important that is on here is a backup file of all of your contacts. I, the older I get, the less I can remember phone numbers. I don't know what it is, but it seems like every year I seem to lose a couple of digits off of everybody's number that I used to remember, uh, be able to remember. But I export out my full address book. Now, the important part about that is if you're traveling, let's say I'm in China and I'm trying to get back to someone in the U.S. Perhaps the easiest way for me to communicate is not using a cell phone number, but it's using WhatsApp or another uh, telegram or one of these other programs that you can use to communicate over long distances. When my daughter was stationed in Camp Erjan in Kuwait, we used WhatsApp to talk all the time. Whatever communication platform you're going to use, some of them are going to be email addresses, some of them are going to be numbers. Whatever it is, if you have your ex if you have the your address book exported and stored in an encrypted container inside of this thumb drive, you get somewhere, now you have a way of remembering and getting in contact with those people that you love. Frequently in emergency situations, perhaps someone is not going to be able or they're not going to be online, but if you can leave them a message and tell them where you're at and where you've been and that you're okay, you know, that might be your only link to get back during those initial times of why you're trying to sort everything out. So, encrypted thumb drive is, in my book, essential, and it's, it's small, light, and weighs practically nothing. Next is going to be a permanent marker. Now, inside the guide, we talk about if you have to do, I was in counterintelligence in the Army, if you have to do what we call the mad minute, which is I've got one minute to communicate every piece of information that is critical to someone else. And they need to be able to write it and copy it down so that they don't have to rely upon their memory to recite this stuff. This goes through, the booklet goes through all the different types of information that you would need to communicate. Where you're at, what the address is, what the cross streets are, what the weather is like what the current environment is. Is it a permissive environment? Is it uh, meaning it's nice, safe, and friendly? Or is it semi-permissive, meaning you're in some place that's sketchy? Or if you're we're moving to some other, some other, either parts of certain cities or other countries to where it's a non-permissive environment. And if you get caught, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Also, it's going to talk about how to communicate about injuries. How are you going to move from one place to the next place? What's going to be your mode of transportation? What's your route? And this might be something that you end up leaving in someone's voicemail so that they would know Perhaps when they, who are not in the same situation that you're in, are able to get that message, they will have all the critical information about what's going on with you, if you're hurt, what the weather's like, if you feel safe, will be able to be communicated quickly simply by following the guide outlined inside of here. But as part of this, you may not be able to get a hold of the other person or you may need to leave a message at the site that you're at with all this information in it, more or less in an encoded way, not really encrypted way, but you're just providing it in a way that's short form 
so that the other person can understand if they come looking for you, for instance, at your work, if you were going to leave there on foot and you're headed perhaps to a rally point that you've pre-established with your family, maybe another family member is able to get to you in a vehicle, but they don't know what direction you left in or where you went to. This talks about where to leave certain messages, how to leave the information in there so that they know it is really you, you're okay, you're traveling on foot, you're headed this direction or moving to this rally point. And you can use a, a Sharpie to write that. This talks about writing it on the side of a building in certain locations, that sort of thing. Next, I love a lumber marker. A Sharpie, permanent Sharpie works great in most circumstances, but some places it just won't write. I found a lumber marker is a great way to write in some of those other areas to where this does not do all that great a job. Next is a small uh, right in the rain pen. Some people have space pens. I just leave the refill in here because that's all I need to write with. Again, space is super tight inside of here. I'm trying to get the most functionality possible out of the bottle. And then, of course, as I've already discussed, there's going to be the right in the rain notebook that I'm going to take all my notes in. This is what I saw. This is when I saw it. This is the direction I'm going. Here's the place I left messages or any other vital information that I need to communicate and I need to write down is simply going to be inside here. And finally, there is the good old fashioned pencil and a pencil sharpener. This is a stainless steel pencil sharpener just because if I need to make fire sticks and I want to put a stick inside there, start twisting it and get shavings off. It's a great way instead of just using a knife to shave off a stick. Uh, but if you're going to have a pencil, you need to have a sharpener. And I like a pencil because you've got an eraser on it. Those are some different things that you can use for communication. But let's say you're in the back country, right? If you are in the middle of the woods, there might not be a, you know, you might not be able to write a message on a building because there's no buildings around. And it might be a little hard to see something written on a tree, but you still want to be able to communicate. You're in those very rural or remote areas. So there's a couple things. First would be a small uh, whistle. Whistles work great for getting people's attention. If you've ever tried to yell or scream in the woods for any period of time beyond about a minute, you're going to blow your voice out and it's not going to work. You're just, you're going to become hoarse. You're not going to be able to yell out or scream out anymore. But a whistle, on the other hand, if you can, if you can blow, you can get a lot of sound out of a whistle and it travels a long way, much further than your voice. So use the whistle. The other thing on here is a signal mirror. This is a super small SOL signal mirror. It's got still got all the wrapping around it. If you need to signal an aircraft, you can simply, you know, there's a whole technique. We're not going to go into it now. It's kind of beyond the, the discussion here, but there's a technique for picking up the sun, siding on your uh, target, and then moving this back and forth and creating flashes off in the distance. If you have someone searching for you and there's an aircraft in the air, that's one great way to do it. This only works during the daytime though. At night, I tend to like a chem light. In the military, we had chem lights that you can only see under NVGs, your night, night vision equipment. And so you could simply take one of those special chem lights, pop it, run some 550 cord through it, spool off you know 30 inches or so and you could start spinning that above your head and it would make this very unusual swirling pattern on the ground that pretty much anybody up in the sky that is trying to look for stuff on the ground as long as you're not in an urban area if you're in some place to where they can make out that the brightness of that object against the background and it's not a bunch of uh, uh, light pollution going on around you, you know, they're going to be able to see that and be able to vector in on your position pretty quickly. So if you're in the civilian setting, no one's going to have NVGs. You know, your search parties might or might not, depending on how well funded the county is, 
In fact, in some counties, they might not even have any aircraft that they would use to look for you. And uh, some of them might not even have pilots that could fly at night. Having that type of chem light might not do you any good. But if you have just a normal chem light that you buy at a uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that, if you even if you have an aircraft overhead, you can still swing it up, spin it in the air. It's going to make a very unusual pattern on the ground. If it's a search aircraft and they're looking for you at night and you're in a remote area, it's going to really stand out. If you're in an urban area, it's going to be less so and depending on how much light pollution there is. So bear that in mind. A great thing to use a chem light for. And I always store the chem light inside the bottle. And sometimes there are two in there depending on which one of these bottles because the contents vary slightly. That is communications. The next topic is fire. Everybody likes this. Fire in this is an essential part of survival. It is going to be able to provide you the ability to cook. It's going to provide you the ability to uh, see at night. It's going to scare away predators in many, some sort of situations or circumstances. It's going to allow you to stay warm. It has a uh, we used to refer to a fire as being a nighttime television because you can just sit there and watch the fire at night. It has a way of raising your morale. Fire is very important. It can also be used, again if you have the stainless steel bottle, it can also be used in order to or kill bacteria in the water. If, if you place tainted water meaning tainted with some kind of oil or pollutant, uh, for example, fertilizer off the ground that has gotten into runoff. If you try to boil the water, it's not going to take the fertilizer out of the water. And if you drink the water, you're going to become sick. If you drink water that has gasoline in it or something like that, it's going to make you sick because your body's not intended to get rid of those type of chemicals. In some cases, it could be quite deadly. But if you are pulling water from a stream and a bear, a deer, a small animal has urinated in that and there has begun to grow some type of virus in the water that you're not able to see, placing the water inside the bottle and boiling it to a roaring boil for several minutes is going to kill all the bacteria. The gross part of it is you end up going to just drink the bacteria because it's super small. You drink bacteria in water every single day. Even water that looks very, very clean can have plenty of bacteria and viruses inside of it. But in those cases, if you've boiled it and it's just the viruses in it, you should be fine to drink it. Uh, but, you know, if it's contaminated, it's not going to help with the contamination. There are a couple different ways to start a fire. The first is a good old big lighter. Of course, everybody has big lighters. It's always going to be inside the bottle. Sometimes there will be two big lighters inside the bottle. On the back side of at least one of the big lighters, there's always going to be a large needle and a small needle. I put the needles on the Bic lighter because I frankly don't want to get stuck with them and it's a good way to make sure that the pointy end stays covered. I also know the lighter is very important and I don't want to lose it. Uh, by placing it on there and then having the needles attached, I know I'm not going to lose the needles either. There is a number of cotton balls, which are just standard cotton balls that are stuffed down inside of the bottle just depending on how much room I have left in it. That's what goes in it when if there's any void inside the bottle, uh, there's cotton balls stuffed in it. I do place a small thing of petroleum jelly. Petroleum jelly works in a number of different situations. It works in first aid situations. It also is a great fire starter. So you can place that onto a cotton ball or some kind of small tender and to help that combust and get going. Finally, there's always some matches and strikers here on the back. So that is something that I pretty much keep in all of them. In one or two of the bottles, I actually have a full box of matches, but in this bottle, since it's one of the main ones that I move around with the most, 
It's only got a small set of matches. There's going to be a Pharisee or a Mrod. This one's not very well used, but I do like the ones. It's kind of small. This is not the one I would carry out in the woods very often, but this is more of a backup. This is when all else has failed and I'm down to the bottle. It's gotten real and the craps hit the fan, so to speak. I like this because it has got a way to attach this around my neck. So I've just put it on a necklace. You could do that out of 550 cord. You could do that out of the uh, tarred bank line so that you make sure you don't lose it because this can be very important. I also have a small wet fire inside of there. It's just a good way to get fire started, so it helps get that going faster to have something like this in there. So those are the different ways that I have to start a fire inside the bottle.